We are the Korean car maker's biggest market in the world for this particular model. It's a chart topper in the passenger car sales race and it seems us Aussies can't get enough of this car. The Hyundai i30 has pretty much grown legs and has been running out the door. It's been the best-selling passenger car in Australia month after month so far this year, beating out the Toyota Corolla and the Mazda 3. Why? Well, the deals have been really good. With driveway pricing as low as $19,990 with free auto for this, the entry-level active model. Plus, Hyundai have added a few little extras recently that not many of its competitors offer in a base model. Now the Active is by far the best selling variant in the range, but there's also the Active X, the SR, the SR Premium and the Premium. When it comes to body styles, we only get the hatch now. Hyundai have recently discontinued the Tourer or the Wagon here in Australia. The Active has body coloured bumpers, halogen headlights and fog lamps, but for a car this size, it's got a really decent amount of boot space. You get 378 litres, plus a full size spare under the floor here. Put that in perspective, the Toyota Corolla, 360 litres, the Mazda 3 is even less generous at 308. Those rear seats are 60-40 split fold and that will expand the cargo volume to around 1300 litres. In the back here there's a couple of shopping hooks, a little storage nook down the side and a 12 volt outlet. Got to watch your head a little bit getting in. Even with the generous size of that boot, there's quite an impressive amount of space in the back seat. I'm around 5 foot 8 and I've got more than adequate headroom, loads of knee room. Something that isn't so great though is the shape of these outboard seats. They feel quite narrow and like your outside shoulder is sort of angled inwards. Now there's no armrest, there's no cup holders. This is a bit of a blank canvas, no air vents, no USB, no 12 volt. But you do get a bottle holder in the doors and quite a decent sized little storage bin there. No mat pocket here, but you do get one on the passenger side. This is really nice for an entry level specification. There's soft touch plastics right across the top of the dash, these brushed silver finishes, and they continue along the doors too. The seats, they are cloth trimmed, but there's contrast stitching and this fabric, nice side bolstering and they're quite comfortable. When it comes to storage, there's loads of it. This center console bin, look how deep that is. There's a little nook here too, maybe for coins. Two cup holders, a sunglasses holder. And what I find the most convenient is this storage area here. Room for a wallet, phone, lip gloss, keys, all those little things that you find yourself lugging around every day in your car. Above that, two 12 volts, USB auxiliary, nothing fancy with the aircon, it's simply a manual system. Cruise control is standard right across the range. And also on the steering wheel, there are controls for the volume, your phone, and things like that. You also get a 7-inch touchscreen as standard, and recently Apple CarPlay and Android Auto were added as standard. So while there's not a built-in satellite navigation system, you can access Google Maps as well as music apps like Pandora and Spotify. It's got a rear view camera plus rear park assist, and it's probably pretty lucky that it's got those systems because rear visibility is a little bit hampered. Though I think the external styling looks great, those C pillars are quite large, and the angle of the windows do make it hard to see. Nothing fancy when it comes to starting it up, just a good old fashioned turn of the key. The Active and the Active X both get a 1.8 litre four cylinder petrol engine. The two litre four cylinder petrol, that comes in the SR and the SR Premium. All though are available with either a six speed manual transmission or like this one, a six speed automatic. There's a diesel option too, a 1.6 litre four cylinder that's in either the Active, ActiveX or Premium variants. So this 1.8 litre produces 107 kilowatts and 175 newton meters. So it's got enough get up and go. Out on the road, the automatic transmission, it's quite intuitive and it does move fast enough through the gears. It's really quite smooth when you're just cruising around town. You might notice a little bit of engine noise, but it's when you get up to the higher speeds that you'll notice that the road noise becomes far more intrusive. The ride though, it's nice and supple and remains compliant even on some of Sydney's dodgier roads. Now if you do want to hook it around a corner or give it a little bit of stick, the i30 remains quite composed. There are actually three steering modes in this and I'm a little bit stumped as to why. It's not generally something that you'd be looking for in a base model small car. But comfort, it is nice and light, kind of handy when it comes to parking. 
than this normal and sport does add a little bit of extra weight though I'm really not sure when you're really going to take advantage of it and use it. Now fuel economy that's acclaimed 7.3 litres per 100 kilometres. In quite heavy stop start traffic around Sydney over the past few days we've actually pretty much doubled that 14.4 litres. There is actually an eco mode button though that I haven't been using so I'm going to switch that on uh, and maybe give it a few days in that and see what it does. The i30 comes with Hyundai's five-year unlimited kilometre warranty, a lifetime cap price servicing plan and roadside assist. It's no wonder these are selling faster than tickets to an ACDC concert. There's absolutely nothing missing here. It's spacious for a small car. It's got an above average warranty. There's a touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, reverse camera and cruise control. It's a base model. Why wouldn't you buy it?